In August, just three days before the White House took a historic 10% stake in Intel, one foreign investor made a stunning move. SoftBank's Masayoshi San poured $2 billion into the struggling chipmaker. The decision seemed to contradict his entire investment philosophy. Why would the world's most famous high-wire gambler, the man who lost billions on WeWork, invest in a legacy chipmaker that had been widely counted out of the AI era? One way to think about it is that this was not an opportunistic financial trade, but a calculated move to acquire the final missing piece in San's ambition to build a full-stack AI portfolio. Having already secured the chip designs through ARM and the intelligence layer with his investment in OpenAI, San's vision lacked one critical component, the means of production, a leading-edge semiconductor foundry. Intel, as a strategically important but financially underperforming asset, was the only viable target. To understand this play, we will first deconstruct the existing pieces of San's AI investments, identify the critical missing link, analyze how the U.S. government's intervention became the catalyst, and finally, visualize the integrated platform San is attempting to build. Let's unpack this. SoftBank's investments in AI span a few layers across the AI stack. The first layer is the blueprint, the design of the processor. This is the architectural DNA that dictates how a chip processes information. SoftBank secured this layer through their core asset, ARM Holdings. For decades, ARM operated on a simple, highly profitable model. It didn't build physical chips itself. Instead, it designed the fundamental blueprints for them. Companies from Apple to Qualcomm would then pay ARM a licensing fee to use these blueprints as the foundation for their own custom processors. But that passive IP licensing model is now undergoing a fundamental shift. During their August investors call, ARM's management confirmed they are expanding from CPU architecture into the semiconductor business and are now exploring offering chiplets, small specialized components, and possibly even full solutions. In essence, SoftBank is transforming ARM from a passive IP licensor into an active fabless design house, the same model used by NVIDIA and AMD. They are no longer just selling the recipe, they are starting to sell the ingredients and perhaps even the entire meal. The second layer is the intelligence, the large language model that acts as the brain of the operation. This is the software that thinks, reasons, and generates answers. San secured this asset by investing in OpenAI. To understand the value of this asset, consider its growth. SoftBank CFO described it as a once-in-a-generation revenue velocity, with OpenAI growing from $20 million in revenue to $4 billion in two years, and an expectation to reach $13 billion within the next year. The final layer is the engine, the physical data centers and power infrastructure required to run these models at a global scale. SoftBank is building this through its multi-hundred billion dollar Stargate project, the scale of this initiative is immense. As SoftBank CFO confirmed, they envision Stargate as a 10 gigawatt class project, a level of power consumption comparable to that of a small country. By mid-2025, San had assembled nearly every piece of a vertically integrated AI portfolio, but it is dependent on an external supplier for a vital component, the physical manufacturing of advanced chips, this created a clear strategic gap. As ARM transforms from a passive IP licensor into an active fabless design house, the same model used by NVIDIA and AMD, it inherits the industry's single greatest dependency, Taiwan's TSMC. This dependency runs counter to San's stated focus. As he declared in a statement on the Intel deal, his interest lies in advanced semiconductor manufacturing, a clear signal that he sees control over the physical production of chips as a critical endgame. To secure this manufacturing capability, the calculus was simple. TSMC and Samsung were unacquirable, national champions, leaving only one viable target in the Western world with the necessary scale, R&D infrastructure, and intellectual property. Intel's historic crisis had transformed it into an underperforming asset. Its foundry business was described by some research analysts as a sinkhole, but one that could become incredibly valuable if the AI boom plays out. But acquiring a piece of America's semiconductor icon required more than just capital. It required navigating the complex landscape of U.S. national interests. 
To complete his full-stack portfolio, San would need a catalyst, an event that would align his ambitions with Washington's own. Intel's transformation from an untouchable icon into a vulnerable national champion highlights a key dynamic in the new tech Cold War. Analyzing this intersection, where a corporate crisis creates an opening for a state-backed maneuver, is the kind of work we do every week in our newsletter, ARPU. If you want to understand how geopolitical forces create once-in-a-generation acquisition opportunities, you'll find the link in the description. That catalyst arrived in the form of direct state intervention. But this was not a traditional bailout. The plan was to convert $11 billion in existing CHIPS Act grants into a 10% equity stake for the U.S. government. Intel wasn't getting new cash from Washington, it was getting a powerful new shareholder. The logic of this move was not financial aid, but strategic signaling. With TSMC in Taiwan producing nearly all of the world's most advanced chips, Intel is now the U.S. national champion by default and its failure is a national security vulnerability. By taking a direct stake, the White House was sending an unmistakable message. Intel will not be allowed to fail. This government backstop was designed to de-risk the asset for private capital, a crucial step for a company whose financial foundation was visibly cracking, with credit rating agency Fitch having recently downgraded its debt to just two notches above junk status. This created the perfect opening for a politically savvy foreign partner like Son to enter the picture. SoftBank's $2 billion check announced just three days before the White House deal served as convenient private sector validation for the government's unprecedented move. It allowed the White House to frame its intervention not as a desperate rescue, but as a savvy public-private partnership alongside the smart money. San was no longer just an investor. He was now positioned as a key ally in the revival of American manufacturing, a move that provided significant political cover for his much larger ambition, acquiring the means of production. The business logic behind the Intel investment begins to crystallize when you examine the evolution of SoftBank's most important asset, Arm Holdings. By confirming its expansion into the semiconductor business during its recent investor presentation, Arm is no longer just a passive architect. It is being positioned as an active fabless design house, the same model as NVIDIA and AMD. This pivot creates a long-term demand for leading-edge manufacturing capacity. And in the current market, that demand is met almost exclusively by Taiwan's TSMC. Viewed through this lens, the Intel investment is not a short-term trade. It is a long-term play to secure a position in the one critical layer of the AI value chain where SoftBank had no presence, physical manufacturing. This aligns with Masayoshi Son's own stated interest in advanced semiconductor manufacturing. The investment thesis is clear. SoftBank is systematically assembling a position across every critical layer of the AI value chain. It now holds a key asset in chip design through an evolving arm, the intelligence layer through its investment in OpenAI, and the massive compute infrastructure to power it all through the Stargate project. With its investment in Intel, it now has a foothold in the final, critical layer, physical manufacturing. SoftBank's investment in Intel, therefore, should be seen not as an isolated financial trade, but as a calculated move to secure the means of production for their AI stack. But this remains a monumental gamble. Son is betting he can succeed where Intel failed, rebuilding a world-class foundry, while simultaneously navigating a complex political partnership with the U.S. government and orchestrating the integration of these massive, disparate technology platforms. The race to build the defining company of the AI era is on, and its success or failure will reshape the entire technology landscape. To track the progress of this ambition, watch these signals. 1. The Foundry Bid The most direct signal will be whether SoftBank's $2 billion investment evolves into a formal offer to acquire a controlling stake in Intel's foundry business. This would be the definitive move to take direct control of the missing manufacturing layer. 2. The ARM and Intel Partnership Watch for any formal announcements of a deep co-development partnership between ARM and Intel Foundry. A deal to create a new generation of AI-optimized chips would be the first tangible evidence of the blueprint being connected to the factory. 
3. The Stargate Supplier The ultimate proof of this strategy will be who is named as the primary silicon manufacturer for the Stargate project. If it's a new Intel SoftBank entity, then the vision of a full-stack platform is becoming a reality. Understanding these tech developments is what we do in our newsletter, ARPU. We go beyond the headlines to analyze the ripple effects of tech's biggest stories. To understand what this new era of technological consolidation means for businesses and investors, you can subscribe at the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.